What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, we're going to give chanting a bit of a chance. Our Father who art in heaven, so, first things first, a lot of you guys are new. There's been a lot of new subscribers in the past couple of days, and that's really exciting. So if you're new to this channel, welcome and thank you so much. What made you join? That's that's the question of the day. Drop it down in the comment section below. What made you subscribe to this channel? I want to know. And if you're just perusing YouTube and came across this one because you were looking up Gregorian chant or something like that, definitely subscribe to the channel because I talk about way more than just chanting. I talk about incense and liturgy and daily prayers and vocation and all sorts of cool, crazy, authentic Christian things. And if you're into that, you're going to want to subscribe. You're going to want to hit that notification bell. And you're going to want to share these videos with your friends who might be interested in the same topic. So I'm looking forward to meeting all of you in the comment section below. Now, chanting. If there was one thing I hated when I was converting, in the process of converting from mainline American evangelicalism into confessional Orthodox Lutheranism, it was chanting. I used to mock my Lutheran friends relentlessly. I would go to matins in the morning. I would go to Vespers or Compline in the evening, and they were chanting. And I used to ridicule them mercilessly. You Lutherans, you could chant the entire Bible in one tone, and then at the end it'd be, Amen. And that'd be it. <laughs> but a little bit of objectivity, and a little bit of study, and a little bit of realizing that I might not have all the answers, and setting my preferences aside, I've come to realize that chanting is nothing if not the voice of the church. You see, Christianity today, especially in America, wants Christianity to be cool and hip and modern and with the times. And you got to go to these elevated churches with vision casting leaders and you got to have a rock band and you got to be, you got to go out into your community, Rick Warren style, and find out what the pagans want and then make church that. Christians, we have a voice. We've always had a voice. And that voice has been, if nothing, driven by Paul's words, be not conformed to the ways of this world. The voice of the church is markedly different from whatever culture the church finds herself in. It is markedly different. Someone, a non-Christian, should come to your church for whatever reason, see what you're doing in church, how you're singing in church, how you're speaking in church, how you're behaving in church, the motions that you make in church, and recognize that something is markedly different inside this building and amongst this community. That's chanting. Chanting, it's not singing. It's not music. It's... What is the word for it? What would chanting be? Um, a melodious reading? It's, it's, it's not speaking. It's not singing. Uh, it's reading with melody. Specifically, almost always, the word of God. And it doesn't take much to, to find it in the Bible. It's biblical. It's in the Psalms. The song that, that they sang at, at the parting of the Red Sea when they were safely on the other side, do we think they broke out the rock band and the fog machine and the lights? Or do you think God's people, in awe and reverence for what they had just witnessed, sang out in awe and reverence? And then we see it throughout church history, don't we, that this chanting continues, which leads the mainline American Protestant to think, that's too When we use the words of, say, the Athanasian Creed, uh, must hold to the Catholic faith, and the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. Now they're confusing the persons and they're confounding the substance. That's the Catholic faith. The worshiping of the triune God. That's Catholic, according to the whole. Catholic is a great word. Catholic is a better word than Christian, but Protestants don't want to use it because they're afraid they're going to be confused for Roman Catholics. And they think all of these liturgical things belong to Rome. They don't. Rome did them, but that doesn't mean it started with Rome. There was a Christian church 
before the usurpation of the office of the Bishop of Rome, i.e. the Pope. Jesus said he would never leave nor forsake his church. There's always been a Christian church on earth, and the biggest one in the Middle Ages just so happened to be the Roman Catholic Church, although the Eastern Orthodox could give you a run for their money, and they've got some amazing chanting skills themselves. So chanting, chanting is the voice of the church. Chanting is it's the voice of the gospel, and chanting in its modern history throughout the church belongs to Protestants, not Rome. We see, we're so romophobic in our brain, we don't realize that chanting became very big in the church during the Lutheran Reformation. There was some chanting going on, but by and large, whole swaths of liturgy were spoken and were spoken quietly. Do you ever wonder if you've been in the Catholic Church why they ring the bells during the words of institution? That comes from the tradition of the people in the back who could not hear when they were being spoken because the priest was whispering them. So they had to ring the bells so you would know. Luther said this, these words, these great gospel words, especially the words of the inst of institution, that belong to the people. They deserve to be heard. They deserve to be reflected upon. We should be taking our time with these words and receiving them in their fullness. And it was Luther who introduced the concept of chanting the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Luther gave so much music back to the people and, and really engaged them in liturgy, a call and response, much of it chanting. Why? To use melody to put emphasis on the Word of God. That's why. Ch now, do you have to be good at chanting in order to chant? No. Nope. I'm not good at chanting. I still do it. And you know, at my church, whenever we do chant on occasion, the pastor's admitted uh, he's not very good at it, but he recognizes the value of it. And so we have a cantor uh, who will chant certain portions of the liturgy, not the words of institution. The church that's attached to the Lutheran school that my son goes to, now that pastor is a brilliant chanter. Chanting is much like a robe, I think. Now, the robe is meant to blend the pastor into the furniture, so to speak, to blend him in with all the architecture of the church to, to diminish the man so that Christ could be elevated. It blends the pastor in. And I think chanting does the same thing. It takes his words, his voice, his thoughts, his personality, and it kills it. And it just proclaims to you in the church's voice the gospel. That's what chanting is, and you don't have to be good at it. Although, how do you get good at something? You practice. So I practice chanting when I'm alone. I have my, um, what is it called? The app that I have, Pray Now app, which is basically uh, the treasury of daily prayers. I have that on my phone, and it plays the melodies for me so that I can hear them and, and hum them along. And then when I look at the text, it's marked out for chanting. The word of God really should be chanted at all costs, in all circumstances, as often as possible, especially the words of institution. Chanting, uh, chanting the Lord's Prayer or chanting, let's say, the Apostles' Creed, this is a great way to teach it to your children because music drives memory. So when we're coming into a world where Christianity is swaying more towards the, it's going to be illegal again side. We use music, the church's music, to commit this to memory. They can never take it away from us. Chanting is an ancient tool that belongs in a modern world because the modern world won't be able to handle it.
because they can't destroy it because it's such an ancient tool. Chanting is... It, it makes us very different from the world. Chanting makes me very different from mainland American Christianity because I'm Lutheran. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's a wonderful gift. And I'm going to provide a lot of links in the description below to different chanting melodies, to different parts of our liturgy being chanted. And I want you to, to listen to them and let me know what you think in the comment section about chanting. I mean, I know there's been some criticism before about, hey, stop talking about something and actually do it. Well, I would like to keep my subscribers, so I'm not going to chant on my channel, but I'm going to provide a lot of opportunities to listen to chant in the in the description below. I do have some resources for you, though. I'm not going to leave you hanging. The Concordia Psalter, here we go, is an incredible resource, and let me see if I can show you why. Because, here we go, see that? See how the, the markings of the, the words of Scripture match the markings of the melody so that you can follow along? So the Concordia Psalter is a con an, an incredible resource when it comes to chanting, and I highly recommend picking it up. This is my go-to for chanting the Psalms. And Christian, you can see, <laughs> wretched sinner that I am, mine is permanently, like permanently tagged. Where is it? There we go. Psalm 51. Another great resource, I've said it before, I'll say it again, Lutheran Service Book. And if you want to see what Lutheran liturgy looks like, Lutheran Service Book. And again, you can see if the lighting will allow for it. This one doesn't have the melodies, but it does have the markings. And if you go to the very beginning of the Psalter, that's a cool noise. You can see all of the melodies set. So this one, while it doesn't have the melodies there like the old Lutheran worship did, it does have it does allow you freedom to choose the melody that you're gonna chant. And way in the back is liturgical music. So we have um, our Father who art in heaven that can be chanted. And I've chanted this with my kids. Or um, we all believe in one true God. Chanted. A great way to teach the Apostles' Creed. This is a phenomenal, it's more than just a teaching tool. It's, it, well, it's more than just the church's voice. It's a great teaching tool as well. And of course, last resource I can recommend for you, Treasury of Daily Prayer. This is incredible because it always has a psalm. And in the middle, it has all sorts of, of cool liturgies and, and divine offices. So here, ah, the litany. I'll provide a link to the litany. Call and response, chanting, it's incredible. Chanting was one of my least favorite things about being Lutheran when I was becoming Lutheran, and now it is one of my favorite parts about being Lutheran. Because not only does it set me apart from the culture of this world, it sets me apart from the culture of mainline American Christianity, and it makes me distinctly Catholic. Hope you enjoyed this conversation about chanting. Check out all the links in the description below. And until next time, may God richly bless you. And the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.